The Groove Rio Learning Center has pre-wired connections from the Groove Rio unit's I.O. to its load panel. Let's take a look at how these I.O. channels have been configured. From the Groove Manage home screen, there are several I.O. related page options. When you restored the Groove Rio Learning Center package in a prior lesson, the I.O. channels were named and configured according to the backup file in the package. Let's see how they're configured. Click I.O. Channels. Your Groove Rio has 10 I.O. channels available. This configuration here is one of thousands of ways the channels can be configured. Each row in this table represents an I.O. channel. The gray column on the left shows the channel number starting with zero, its signal and function. Channel zero is a digital input. Looking further down the column, channel two is an analog input. Channel four is a digital output and channel 7 is an analog output. The next column in the table displays the name of the channel and its current status or value. When there's an error condition, it could also display something called a quality error. A quality error is a message with an error code and a possible reason for the error, such as inputs that are out of range. You can use it to troubleshoot field devices that are wired to that I.O. channel. You can give your channels unique, descriptive names. The names shown here are descriptive names you can associate with the load panel on the Groove Real Learning Center, like Top Button and Bottom Button. Press the Top Button on your Learning Center. It's a latching push button with a red LED that stays on until you press it again. When the channel is on, notice that Channel 0 on the In column lights up. The Groove Rio front panel has two columns of I.O. status LEDs. The left column has indicators for up to seven digital input points, and the right column, titled Out, has indicators for up to ten digital outputs. There are no indicators for analog input or output channels. The greater than sign on the right means you can click it to expand the information about the channel. Click channel zero to expand the information about the top button. The channel page shows the name of the channel, the Groove Real module it's configured on, and the channel type as a digital input of 5 to 30 volts. But let's take a look at how this was selected from the many options available. Click Configure in the upper right. From this configuration page, notice Top button is green. This means you can change the name by clicking in this field to make changes. The module type, your Groove Rio, can't be changed. The channel type is green, indicating you can change the type from here. Click on the current option. The options for this channel are all listed here. Digital input, analog voltage and current input, thermocouple, thermistor, and resistive input. For example, notice analog output channels are not on this list. That's because they're only allowed on channels four through seven. Click cancel. The state of the channel is on. I'll press top button again to turn it off. The current state changes to off, but on latch and off latch remain on. The on latch turns on and stays on when the input channel goes from off to on. Likewise, the off latch turns on and stays on when the digital channel changes from on to off. The latches remain set until they're cleared. How would you use these features? You could use them to test against a control program written in, say, C++, Node-RED, or Pack Control to detect if something turned on or off very quickly. Your program could catch this state change by checking the on latch or off latch to make programming decisions. I can manually clear latching from here, or from a program if I write to the memory map location for this channel. The quality field indicates all is normal for this channel with no error messages to report. Click Channels to go back to the I.O. Channels page. Bottom button is a digital input, but let's take a look at what type it is. It's a digital input that's a powered switch input. This means the module provides the power to a dry contact switch. In your application, this can save you costs in wiring external power to the switch. The bottom button is a momentary button, meaning it stays on only as long as you press the button. It also has on and off latches. 
This input has been configured as a counter, meaning it'll keep track of the number of times the bottom button is pressed on and off. Let's take a look at the features that are available for digital inputs. Click on the green counter. There are several options to choose from. Only one can be enabled at a time, and all you'd have to do is select the feature. But we're going to keep counter selected and click cancel. The public access area lets you choose what information can be read or written to by external programs and services such as Node-RED, MQTT, Ignition, or a program you've written and are running in the secured shell. More about that in another lesson. Click Cancel to not make any changes. Notice my Groove Rio has an active counter with a value of 7. You can disable the counter feature from here, but we'll leave it on since we need it for other examples in the Groove Rio Learning Center. Click Channels. Fuel level is an analog input that's wired to the potentiometer on your Learning Center. Click on it to see what is configured here. At a glance, we see that the parameters shown for an analog channel are different from the parameters shown for a digital channel. This time, the channel type is a 0 to 400 K ohm resistive input. It's connected to the potentiometer on the Groove Rio Learning Center. Turn the knob all the way to the left. The reading is 0. Turn the knob all the way to the right. Notice the value is around 1,000 gallons. Let's see how we arrived at this value. Click Configure. Again, we see the parameters that can be changed are shown in green. The name, the channel type. Next is Scaling. Over on our Learning Center, the potentiometer is a variable resistor from 0 to 10,000 ohms, and it's connected to the terminals of an analog input channel that can measure 0 to 400,000 ohms. We're going to use our potentiometer to simulate the water level in a 1,000 gallon tank. The challenge here is to get the potentiometer value to represent the water level. We'll have to do some scaling. In order to get the engineering units, gallons, to represent the actual value of the turned knob. Going from an actual value of 10,000 ohms to 1,000 gallons, is one-tenth of the value. Likewise, we have to apply this one-tenth scaling to the analog input channel with a maximum of, of 400,000 ohms. One-tenth of 400,000 is 40,000, and this is the upper scaled value shown here. The lower scaled value is zero. The engineering unit is entered here. If you need to calibrate the readings that you're getting, you can enter offset and gain values here. Down in public access, notice these value types are different from the ones we just looked at for the bottom button. Click Cancel to leave the configuration page. From the channel page, notice that the min and max values are saved until cleared. Click Channels. Click on Channel 3, PID Temperature. The channel is an analog input configured as an ICTD. This is connected to the ICTD probe that's attached to the Learning Center. ICTDs are ideal for air temperature measurements, such as room temperature, freezer control, and energy management. Let's go back to the IO Channels page. Channel 4 is a digital output. Click Blue Ring LED. This channel type is a digital output, and it's wired to the blue LED ring around the bottom button. Click the toggle button to see it turn on. If it didn't turn on, make sure you connected the USB-C connector in the back of the Learning Center, and you plugged it into a source of power. Go ahead and turn it off. Click Channels. Channel 5 is an analog output. Click on Panel Light. The page lets you configure an output in volts. Type in 10 and press Enter. The Learning Center's plexiglass lights up with a blue LED. Type in 0 again. The blue backlight turns off. Click Configure. Scaling is also available for this channel, but the defaults were kept here. Clamping lets you set a safe upper and lower limit for the output. A watchdog monitors communication from a host, 
like from a Groove Epic controller, on Groove Rio's port 2001. If nothing has accessed the port in the time specified, then this channel goes to the value configured here. Its purpose is to automatically bring the process to a safe state should communication to the Groove Rio fail. Let's cancel from here and click Channels. Channel 6 isn't configured with anything and by default is configured as a digital input. Channel 7, Probe Heater, is an analog output. This channel is connected to a resistor that was added to the tip of the ICTD probe. The probe on your learning center is actually part of a PID controller that's been set up. If the PID controller has to heat up to reach a desired set point, the PID will control the current output to this channel in order to heat up the resistor. This channel is scaled for a 0 to 100% output from the PID. We'll go more in depth about the PID in a later lesson. Click Cancel and then Channels. The last two channels on Groove Rio, channels 8 and 9, are Form C electromechanical relays digital outputs that could handle up to 5 amps each. Click Toggle. You can hear the relay turn on as well as see the channel LED status. Go ahead and turn it off. Click Channels. There you have it, an overview of the I.O. channels that are configured on your Groove Rio, what they're connected to on the Groove Rio Learning Center, and also why they were configured the way they were. This same I.O. unit offers you over 200,000 unique combinations of I.O. possibilities. To help you explore the options, check out the interactive Groove Rio Explorer available on the Opto22 website. Imagine the benefit of having only one part number for all of your I.O. needs.